Norvlet Fries. Theme for the day, the cross leads home. As you enter into a relationship with God this morning, when you come on morning glow, you enter into a relationship with God. God bless you. Enjoy the day. Glow in Jesus. And remember, this is spiritual strength to meet an untried day. Before we go any further, the first thing we need to do is to put God in place. Let his Holy Spirit lead us. So at this time, we'll ask Sister Lydia Hutchinson to pray for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for another opportunity to hear your words. And as we come this morning, we pray for those who will be taking part. We pray for the speaker and we pray for the message, Lord, that as it reaches us, it will help us to be closer drawn to you. Father, be with those who will be viewing another time. Help, Lord, that they also will receive a blessing. Be with us, we pray, in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lydia. Prayer is the key. Health plays a very vital part in our lives. Because with health, there is wealth. So at this time, we invite Sister Shanella Frank Tappin to give us our morning nugget. Hello, good morning. So this morning's health nugget is going to be about this mister right here, lemons. So lemon, lemon juice is a natural antiseptic. You can apply lemon juice to, to a sunburn or a bee sting to reduce the swelling or pain. The antioxidant in the fruit helps reduce wrinkles and blackheads. It gives the skin a healthy glow. Lemons can also be used for darkening skin like under the arm, the neck, the elbows, the knees, between the legs, wherever has an unnatural darkening of the skin. So how do we apply this remedy? Simply ream the lemon or squeeze out the juice. Apply the juice directly to the affected area using either a cotton pad or you can use a bounty towel, whichever one suits you best. Leave it on for about 30 to 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Then simply rinse it off. Over time, you will see the difference. Now for the other half of the lemon, do not throw it away. Squeeze out the juice, add it to a glass of warm water and drink it. The benefits are endless. Best the best time to drink this remedy is in the mornings before you eat anything. The, some of the benefits could be detoxification, reduction of joint pain. It helps with digestion and I can go on. But for today, I will end here. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sister Frank Toppin for this helpful benefit with lemon god bless you and i know we have learned something new today have a blessed day thank you at dunamis seventh day adventist church 461 montauk avenue is a house of prayer for all people invite your friends your relatives your neighbors tell them we are on youtube we are on Facebook and we are on Zoom. And so we are there in person, 11 o'clock, every Sabbath, every Saturday. Come and get that spiritual nourishment from our beautiful pastor, Pastor DC Francis. 
It's a welcoming church. Come and be blessed. This morning we will be favored with song. And this song will be coming from Sister Denisha McCorshin.
what a beautiful and inspiring song from Sister McCourtin this morning in the cross. Let it be our glory ever. What a way to start the day than to start it knowing that Jesus went to the cross for you and I. And it gives us hope to press on. In a world where there's so much turmoil and torment and killing and hatred, today we have that assurance that Jesus went to the cross. And so because Jesus went to the cross, we have an everlasting arm we can lean on this morning. Thank you, Sister McCorchin. The word today will be coming to us from a young, energetic elder, Elder Otino Hamilton. Open your hearts. Remember the song, Jesus, keep me near the cross. So at this time, we welcome Elder Otino Hamilton with the theme for today, the cross leads home. Amen, amen. Let me say good morning to you all, brethren and friends. Thank you, Elder Fries, so much for your introduction. And a special thank you also to Pastor Francis for allowing me to be using your platform, Pastor. It is a great privilege to share the word of God with your brethren this morning. It is indeed a great privilege for me to be here to share with you in morning glow. What a powerful mission work that we have this morning to share the blessing, to share the good news with everyone around us. You know, many persons are feeling so down and, and they need some uplifting words. They, they need a special message to help them to go throughout each day or to carry them throughout each week. So this morning, Morning Glow, we are going to be focusing on the caption, the cross leads home, the cross leads home. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, dear God, for waking us up to see another morning. We are so grateful, dear God, for your mercies and your blessings towards us. As we are about to hear from you, we ask that you will speak, dear God. Hide me behind the cross even now, dear Father. And as your message go forth, may we may it find root in our hearts, dear God, and may we be transformed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. The cross leads home. Now, we know how this world was created. And if we go to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, we would see the account of how our great creator God created this world. It was perfect. Indeed, he said it himself. It was very good. It was a wonderful place to live. There was no sin, no evil. Animals and, and human beings were working together in, in unity. No harm, no danger, nothing negative was happening in the Garden of Eden. But we know what happened. Sin entered. The fall of man began. You know, first murder was committed. Evil was reigning in this earth. And everything started to go down, further down and down and down as humanity continues to live on this earth. Genesis 6, verse 5, that's Genesis 6, verse 5. The Bible says that, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on the evil continually. Can you imagine that? The only thoughts in the hearts of man was evil continually. God did not create us in such a way. We were created in his image perfect beings in harmony with our creator God. Adam and Eve used to walk in the Garden of Eden with God. They, they were in the presence of God. They had a close relationship with him. 
walking with God, worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. But as a people, we have fallen short of this. We have turned our backs against God. We have neglected his commandments. So today in our world, we have so much hatred, malice, how we treat each other, even as Christians. It is so shameful to even speak of. Our hearts are so wicked toward each other. We have neglected the commandments of God, deciding to, to, to not even place God as our priority. The Sabbath is no longer of importance to us. How we, we, we react to each other, how we treat each other, it is not even what God desires of us. You know, the penalty that we should have received for this is death. And Romans 6 verse 23 states this, that the wages of sin is death. We are condemned to death. The, 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 the principle of, 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 of the fact that, you know, this is our reward. We are paid exactly what we should be deserving and that should have been death. But this morning, I declare that that is not so. And I say, praise God. We should have died. That is the penalty for what we have done. But guess what? The cross, our Savior, he took that initiative upon himself. He took our place. He was that lamb sacrificed for us. Praise God for that. And this morning, we can testify of God's goodness. We can testify of the victory that we are experiencing now because of what Christ did for us on the cross. Our God, he had other plans for us. You know, what is so, what is so wonderful about all of this? This plan, this plan of salvation, this, this plan of redemption, it was there from beginning. The moment that man sinned, it was set in place. Follow me. Genesis 3 verse 15. That's Genesis 3 verse 15. The Bible declares, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The plan of redemption was already set in place for us. Sinful humanity. No man, no woman, no angel could have taken that place. Only our creator God could have stepped in our stead. Could have taken the, the, the shame, the curse of being hung on a cross. I'm happy to declare this morning, my brothers and sisters of, of Dunamis, that our Jesus, our Savior, went in our place so that we can be redeemed, so that we can be sanctified, so that we can be saved. We are no longer condemned and destined to die. The fact that our Savior took our place, we have that hope, we have that promise of eternity. But guess what? Our Savior is not someone who will barge in, but he's standing at the door of Revelation declares, and he's knocking. And it's only for us to accept this promise, to accept this sacrifice that, that he has made on our behalf. We have to accept it. So he, made, so he made that provision for us so that we can claim it. We can claim that victory. It's only for us to accept it. The cross is there as a reminder that our Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. The cross is there as a reminder that we have a second chance. The cross is there as a reminder that if it hadn't been for Jesus, where would we be even this morning? The cross is there as a reminder that we could get up this morning in morning glow and testify of his goodness. In the cross, in the cross, we have that second chance. The cross leads home. It, 
it is that bridge that will allow us to be able to claim paradise, to be able to claim the promise of John 14, verse 1 to 3, where our Savior declares that he's going to be prepared mansions for us. The cross is a reminder that even though we are feeling sick and destitute and we don't know even what our next move is, the cross is there as a reminder that even throughout this morning that we know not what holds before us, the cross is there as a reminder that when we go to work, that when we go to school, the struggles that we will face, that we don't have to face it alone. The cross is there as a reminder, brothers and sisters, that we have a second chance, that we are not condemned to death. The cross is there as a reminder that we have hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I don't know what you are going through this morning. I don't know the struggles that you are facing. It, it, it might be your health. It might be financial. It might be a spiritual battle that you are experiencing. But I am happy to declare that the cross is there as a reminder that Jesus has already paid it all for us. To God be the glory. The cross is there as a reminder that we have hope that this world is not, this, it, it, it's not the final place for us. The cross is there as a reminder that heaven, the earth made new, is prepared for us. We only have to accept it, brothers and sisters. We only have to accept it. And if we know that the, the, the cross is there for us, why not glory in the cross? The songwriter says that I boast not of works nor tell of good deeds, for not have I done to merit his grace. All glory and praise shall rest upon him, so willing to die in my place. So I will glory, I will glory in the cross, lest his suffering all be in vain. And I will weep no more for the cross that he bore. I will glory in the cross. We know what our Savior did for us. He paid that ultimate price. He sacrificed his life for us so that we can have a second chance. Sinful human beings who are destined to sin. The wages of sin is death. But I thank God that the, the passage did not end there. That, that conjunction, that three-letter word, B-U-T, but we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why not accept Jesus today? Why not accept his sacrifice for us today? If it hadn't been for my Savior, if it hadn't been for the sacrifice that, that he has made on my behalf, on our behalf, we would not have this opportunity this morning to come to him, to humbly bow before him, to offer up our lives before him. Jesus paid it all. Accept him today. I, I don't know where, wherever you are viewing from, but I know today that Jesus has given you a second chance. He has paid that price. He died on Calvary in your stead. No matter how far you feel you have fallen from grace, <laughs> today I'm here to remind you, this morning I'm here to remind you, my friends, that where sin abounds, grace doth much more abound. So accept him today. Take full grasp of the sacrifice that he has made for you. Thanks be to God. We can accept him today because the cross, the cross that he has died for us, the cross that is a curse for anyone who is hung on it, my Jesus took my place so that we can have eternal life throughout today. Shall we pray? Our great and wonderful God, we are so grateful, dear Father, that despite our sinful nature, 
despite what we have done, despite we sinning against you, dear Father, it is so easy for us to turn our backs against you. Despite doing all this, you have stepped in our place. You have paid that ultimate price. And I say today, dear God, thank you. We praise your name. We magnify your name, dear God, because you have been such a wonderful God to us. And so, dear Father, I place before you all of us on this platform. All of us will be watching this stream, dear God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for going all the way for us, oh Father. And so we ask, dear God, that you will help us, that we will not turn our backs, but we will accept this gift. We will accept this sacrifice that you have made for us, this ultimate price that you have paid for us, that we will accept it so that we can live with you throughout paradise. We ask that you forgive us, dear God, where we have faltered, and that you will help us to humbly bow before you, to humbly come before you, and allow you to reign within us. There's someone here this morning, dear God, who think that they have fallen so far away from you and that they cannot come back, but remind them this morning that the price that you have paid, this move that you have made to die on the cross for us, that we have a second chance to live with you throughout paradise. We praise the name and we thank you, dear God, this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So thank Amen. you all for listening. And the cross indeed does lead home. Amen. 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 God bless you and thank you, young man. God call it because you are young to use you. May God bless you, and I know we were blessed because the cross leads home. Morning Glow, every Wednesday morning from 6 to 6.30 is present continuous. Invite your friends, your neighbors, watch, listen, and subscribe. Share. Other programs we have, we are not finished. We are always there and a Sabbath morning. You can come at 9.30 and you will have the Sabbath school program. And at 11, at 11 o'clock, we are live on YouTube and Facebook. These are some reminders, dates that will help you to grow in grace. Family focus will be every last Friday of each month on Zoom. Every last Friday, each month on Zoom. The ID number is 322-828-724. And the passcode is Zero three two six four one. Join us this Friday at seven thirty PM sharp for our Vesper program on Family Focus. Then on some other very important dates from May twenty eighth. To July 2nd, we will be having spiritual strategies for breakthrough, prayer, and fasting. Prayer and fasting with Pastor Josiane Frampton and Dr. Wayne Elizabeth Cleghorn. You can't afford to meet, miss these. You just can't. And then we are not finished. We are full of programs for you. Um, Rally of the Prophets. We have June 4th, we have June 18th, we have June 25th, and we have June 2nd. And on the 11th of June, 
we have a prayer conference. Friends, loved ones, Dunamis is the place to be. Come out and be blessed. Join us on Zoom. And, Zoom. and if you cannot be in, we have our YouTube, we have our Facebook. God bless you. Have a beautiful, prosperous, and productive day in Jesus' name. Remember,